Hello, mixtresses and mixters. This is Mixtress Ray. You're watching Mixtress Video. So I'm doing a collection video and it's storming outside. So hopefully you will be able to hear a little bit of the thunder and we can just have a little hangout session. Um, and I will have to take you through multiple locations in my house in order to show you my entire collection. But I'm gonna do that because I make these for myself primarily just year by year because I wanna know what I've kept, what I have from year to year. Um, so I'm gonna be showing you probably everything, unless I get squeamish about something. Um, <laughs> but most likely I'll be showing you everything. So we're gonna start with my tarot shelf. Um, and let's go. So on top, you will see I have some cards. My card of the month is Hanged One. So I have the Hanged One called Slay the Ego featuring Kali from Dakini Oracle. And I have Kali out because she's my goddess for this season. And I have a skunk card out from the Woodland Wardens Oracle because Michael and I saw a skunk while we were out walking the other day in our neighborhood and it was so fun. We just like stood there and watched it for a while. So um, what is in here? I can show you. <laughs> this is, um, I have had this like my entire life. I don't know, it's possible it was bought for me before I was even born and it was a part of my nursery. I actually have a tattoo that's sort of based on this figurine. And she sits atop this beautiful box that I keep. The, um, my vintage, like, University Press pink onk from, it's actually from the 60s as far as I can tell, and it is really kind of delicate so I haven't been using it so it just kind of hangs out here has a little has an honored space okay let's readjust to the next shelf sorry for the weird angle I will be readjusting quite frequently in this video um, okay, so this little shelf is all of my like smaller tarot boxes since this shelf is not super tall and from left to right it is there are they are in chronological order from their release date. So I have this is actually empty because I have the box in my car or I have the cards in my car right now. So this is my like plaid back from the 80s. RWS. Nefertari's tarot came out in 90... 98, that's what it says. She's not going anywhere, I don't think, because I love... Like, this is my favorite Egyptian tarot that I've ever had. For sure. Crow's Magic from also from 98. I think. Doesn't say on the box. Sorry, I'm, I can't really see what you guys are seeing very well. So I'm probably not keeping everything in the shot super. I'm not being like super good, but I'm not ever super good at this shit, so whatever. This is my Dark Angels from, I believe this one's from like 2007 or 2008. So big, big jump from like 98 to 2008 here. But I love this one a lot. It has been with me since 2019. And I almost got rid of her at one point, but I'm glad I never did. 
My Wild Unknown has come back upstairs. It used to be stored downstairs next to my porch, and I just recently decided I want to I want my porch deck to be something else now. So that's probably the only one that's not going to be pictured in this video is my porch deck, which right now I'm using Pulp Girls Tarot for that. So just for my own future reference, Pulp Girls is downstairs, Wild Unknown is here. I just, I got kind of tired of looking at it. So it's, it's not retired, it's just taking a time out. And my Marigold Tarot is here. And it's actually, it's in the box now. It's been in a bag for maybe a year or two. But this year, I have not used it much. Weirdly. Again, much like the Wild Unknown, it's, it's a very important deck to me. I think it's just in a little bit of a timeout at the moment. Santa Muerte. Another one that I've had since, since I started collecting tarot in 2019. I've had Santa Muerte since then. Moon Power, same with that. Um, my mom gave this to me at the beginning of 2019 and do not use it very often, but I'm, I'm happy I, I never let it go. <laughs> Thank you to Gita, because like before we were ever even friends, I had posted a collection video or something like that and I had said that I was maybe going to get rid of Moon Power Tarot and she, she told me, I think you'll regret that. And, um, you know, most of the time when somebody tells me what to do with my collection, I kind of like, <laughs> but this time I was like, you know what? I think she's right. And because of her comment directly, I kept it. And I'm glad I did. Actually, I'm glad I did because it's an expensive one, an expensive indie deck. I think it's like $66 or something on Etsy. Um, so I'm glad, I'm glad I decided to keep it. Another one I'm glad I decided to keep, Gothmancy Tarot. Um, I've used it a little bit more this year. There was a time that I was, I was mad at it for a while, but I kind of forgave it this year and I'm, I'm glad I still have it. It's another, it's, I, when, almost every time I've ever trimmed a deck, I regret it. And this one, I only did like a micro trim to it, but I wish I hadn't. And I've often thought about buying another copy, but mine is the first edition with, you know what, just cause I'm talking about it, I might as well show it if I can find it. I need to find the magician card. Hold please while I look for the magician card. In the new version of the deck, I mean, I don't know why I'm showing you this because it, I don't have the new version of the deck to compare it to to show you right now. In the newer version of the deck, there's a bird in the Nine of Pentacles card. And I actually like cut a bat out from, ooh, from the guidebook to put it on this card. Is it gonna focus? Can't tell if it's focused or not. Sorry if it wasn't. I just dropped all of these cards on the floor. So maybe I'm not finding the Magician right now because I just dropped all the cards on the floor. Uh, I'll try to find it. Talk amongst yourselves. Anyway, the new version, like, they changed the Magician card to be, like... trying to remember, like I feel like if I look at the card, I will remember what I'm talking about here. Anyway, this is a gothic subculture deck. Robert Smith is the magician. And in the newer version of the deck, I think they maybe took the purple out of his coat or they, they did something to this card that I just really didn't like in the second and other editions of this deck. So I'm glad I never let go of this one, 
even though I'm not super happy with the fact that I trimmed it. But that's okay, you know. That shit happens. <laughs> I probably complain about that every year. I wish I hadn't trimmed this. But, you know. Note to any future... Any uh, tarot babies out there, like, whenever you think about trimming decks... <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe don't. I mean, of course, it, obviously your mileage may vary. So for me, I don't trim decks anymore. Another one that I wish I hadn't trimmed, Desert Illuminations. I have the first edition. And I'm curious to see, because I've heard that it's coming out on US Games, but I think it's been like over a year since I found out that they were going to do mass market. I mean, I don't hate the borderless look that I made. And the cardstock is fucking amazing on this deck. It's like casino grade quality, like very shuffleable, very durable. Like if you spilled something on this, it'd be fine. You know, it's good shit. Good shit. And the colors are so vibrant in this deck. So I'm happy to have this. I got, this is even not, not only the first edition, but it's the first printing. Why do I care about that shit? I kind of wish I didn't, but I'm happy to have it. This one is a recent acquisition. This is Egyptian Art Nouveau, and it was given to me by Dolores. Thank you, Dolores. And I had like such a love affair with it the first few weeks I had it, and then I put it away. But I'm sure I'll get it out again, and we'll see. Like. We'll see how our relationship develops. It'll be interesting to see if I still have it this time next year. Because I don't know yet. It's still very early days with that one. Okay, so next. Hold please while I readjust the shot again. Take it down to this next shelf. Not much on this shelf, so this will be a short one. I just have guidebooks here, as you can see. Goddess Oracle Guidebook, Animal Spirit Guidebook. Um, this is Mystical Shaman, Feathered Omens, Animal Wise, and Tantric Dakini. Those are all the guidebooks for those. And I'm happy to be able to store them here with my decks. Basically, like, at this point, there's just not... This shelf is not stuffed to the gills, and I'm happy with it this way. Um... I'm sure there will be times when it is stuffed to the gills, but for now, it is not. And then here I have a few oracle decks. I have the Kim Cran's Animal Spirit, which I still, I still really love. This is the first oracle deck I bought back in 2019, and I'm very happy to have it. I fucking love the cardstock. I love almost everything about it. Dark Mirror Oracle is another one. This is one that I gave away for, like, a year to a friend and then she she never used it so she gave it back to me and I'm really happy that she did because I'm really this is one of my favorite oracle decks and then this one I got this year high desert oracle it's kind of an affirmation deck almost and it has pictures you know beautiful pictures from the deserts of like, the deserts in like Colorado and New Mexico. Oh man, yeah, it's, I should use this more because it was $14 on Etsy when I bought it. I don't know if it's changed now. I mean, it was only earlier this year. But it's just a really great, straightforward sort of landscape oracle with keywords. And then it has just a few sentences. Let's, let's just like do a random card pull right now. Why not? Just for funsies. What message can we hear right now from the High Desert Oracle? Ooh. Okay. That one. Sanctuary. 
the fearless badger is known for building an extensive home in the earth. This is the time to plan and create your own sanctuary. Clean, rearrange, and organize to create a peaceful, comfortable space. Hell yeah, I mean, I've been doing that for sure. But yeah, good time of year for that too. God, I love this one. I really do. I've been noticing that like, I mean, so basic, but the less I have, the more I appreciate what I have. So the fact that I haven't been using that deck much, despite the fact that I have such fond feelings for it, tells me that maybe there's more that I need to let go of. And as I think Gray said in a recent video, um, as soon as you post a collection video, it changes. So that's going to happen. Now that I'm doing this, I'm going to watch it back like while I'm editing and uploading and all that shit. And I'm going to end up getting rid of more. But that's okay. It's part of the process. It's part of life. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. This is Julie's, um, I call it her Strangling Oracle, but it's the JBG uh, like square oracle deck that she has on her make playing cards. And let's go down even further to the next shelf. This is as far down as I can go, but I can change the angle. So there we go. This shelf has most of my bags, so we'll go from left to right. Oh my god, how amazing is this bag? I really like it. I got it on Etsy from someone that um, lives in India and just uses scrap fabrics, I think, to make bags. And this one I actually had on my like favorites list for like two years, and no one bought it, and she ended up like drastically discounting it. So I think I got it for $10 or less, but I think it's so beautiful. Anyway, this houses two of my goddess oracle decks. So this one's just goddess oracle, and then I have the gods and goddesses card deck. So this has gods and goddesses. This is all from the Hindu pantheon. So these live in this bag. I actually pulled this out yesterday for a client, which I don't normally pull goddess cards for clients anymore, but it was fun to do that yesterday. This has my Mystical Shaman deck in it. I'm happy that I got this one again. It's, it's rare that I get a deck for a second time and I actually keep it. But this is an isolated incident where that happened. This year, Sorsha sent me Ritual Tarot, and she sent it in this um, handmade bag. And that's the only thing I kept, because this is not Ritual Tarot. This is Woodland Wardens, because it had to, her handmade bag had to house, it had to house a special deck and how perfect. Look at these backs with the pattern on this bag. Perfect, right? And I liked the box for Woodland Wardens, but you know what? This bag is better. So I'm not keeping boxes anymore, guys, I, unless I like them. Like if I'm, if I decide to rehome, rehome a deck in a bag, I throw the box out. I'm not fucking storing that shit anymore, guys. This also was from the same person that made this one. And I got it at the same time. I think this one's my favorite of the two. I just love the embroidery and the combination of the fabrics. The attention to detail with all these little things. And this only cost like $10. It was amazing. This is my... Yogic Path Oracle. Isn't that perfect? Look at those together. Gorgeous. Oh, it's not storming anymore. I'm kind of sad. I wanted to hear the, 
the thunder throughout this video, but apparently not. This is Tantric Dakini in here. For some reason, I knew as soon as I got this bag that it was supposed to have Tantric Dakini in it. This is one of the rare, like with all of my different tarot bags, I switch them around a lot. Um, but this one has never held anything except Tantric Dakini. <laughs> For some reason, this leopard print speaks to me with that deck. I don't know why. This bag is new to me, but this has my Halloween tarot in it. Wendy from Occult Compass made this bag, and it's this gorgeous, like, very delicate spiderweb lace over this pumpkin color fabric. Love it. Love it so much. This has my Animal Wise Tarot and both of my Ted Andrews decks, so Animal Wise and Feathered Omens are both in this bag. And that's a special one. Just got Moonchild again lately, recently, and I had a bit of a love affair with it, rebonding to it. So it is kind of like displayed here for now. <laughs> and let's see, can I... I mean, it's not gonna be super cute. This, oh yeah, that's actually just, the floor is damaged right there. Okay, so you can see what all of these are, because they're all in their boxes, but I will still play with them a little bit. Dark Wood Tarot is still in its Gigantor box, and it has this gorgeous, another bag made by Wendy. I mean, her bags are my favorite. Really, I love them so much. They're so special. So that's my dark wood tarot. Tarot vampires. <laughs> Another one, bag by Wendy. Oh yeah. This is one of the ones I've scented with hypnotic poison. So I open, I open this box and hypnotic poison wafts up at me. It's amazing. I have Isis Oracle, which was a gift from Sylvain. I almost got rid of it this year, and I'm glad that I didn't, because I've been sort of drawn to Isis lately. And I do like, I do like, I mean, forgive me, I'm a white girl that likes the Alana Fairchild vibe, and I love Jimmy Manton's artwork, so both of these decks are actually special to me, so I'm glad I have them. And then I have Le Vampire. This was one, it was so funny, like, I probably tell this story every year, but I bought this deck kind of on a whim. I was looking on eBay. I, at the time, I was collecting a lot of Jasmine Beckett Griffith decks, and I didn't really think I needed another one, and I wasn't planning to get this one but I just sort of came upon it. Someone was selling their used copy for cheap. Like I probably got it for like eight bucks or something. And hey, Niblet. Oh my God, everyone's gonna be so happy you were in this video. Um, she has been so sweet today. She's just been cuddling with me and I love her so much, oh my God. She just turned a year old a couple weeks ago. Anyway. So it was sort of a whim. I bought it used. It was like eight bucks. And I, this is the only one I kept. I had the Shapeshifters one. I had Oracle of Shadows and Light. I had the Fairy Tale one. I had the Alice in Wonderland one. This is the only one that I kept. And it was the one that I th thought the least about before buying, you know? Kind of. One of them was a gift. Um, the Alice deck, I think Julie gave me, but I didn't, it just didn't work for me. So I don't really need to have a lot of Jasmine Beckett Griffith decks, it turns out, but I still have three. As the other one that's not pictured is the um, Notorious JBG, also by Julie. Um, that one lives in my board game closet. Then we have a Minty Oracle. 
which I've had since it came out. And this is one that I trimmed because I had to. Um, I had edged it and the edging just bled really badly on the cards, so I trimmed it off. But I still use it a lot. Which is Familiars, I just got this year. It is, oh my god, I have to show this one to you guys because I don't see it very often online. But it is cheesy goodness. I love it so much. She's the quietest cat I've ever had to. Like she just sort of started to learn how to meow and it's still just very like squeaky little meows. <laughs> she doesn't really, she's not very vocal. Um, Telesma Tarot, I rebought this this year because I was so mad at myself for trimming it. So I now have it in the box. I just kind of glued her business card to the side and labeled it so you could see what it was on my shelf. And I'm really happy to have this one again in its full size. It's very difficult to shuffle, but that's okay. I'm kind of viewing this as, I mean, I still use it as a regular tarot deck, but this is more altar art tarot than anything else. Because it's, it's, it's my collage deck and I love it. I mean, I have a few other collage decks. It's it's a favorite art style of mine, but this one is my favorite for sure. Um, then I have Buffy. This is actually empty because this is a, the deck I'm using this week. Um, got this this year as well. I love the color scheme in this deck. I mean, this is the color scheme of the entire deck. I love the reds and purples. Um, the art style is not totally my vibe, but... It was pretty well done for being one of those pop culture inside editions decks. It's pretty well done. Um, I'm happy to have it. And it's actually, it reads really well for me because the, I know the show so well that the like situations that are depicted on the cards brings an extra layer to the readings. And yeah, it, it surprised me because I had high expectations, of course, since Buffy's my favorite show. I had high expectations, and with the exception of the guidebook, don't get me started, but the guidebook, it wasn't badly written, but the there was some disconnect. Probably, probably the publisher wasn't updating the author of the guidebook when the tarot images for certain images were changed, so in some cases, like some of the descriptions in the guidebook, they're describing a situation that is not depicted on the card. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a big miss. Maybe in future editions of this deck, they will fix the guidebook, but I somehow I doubt it, because I don't think that's a priority for them at this publisher. I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe that'll change. Okay, so that's everything that's on this shelf. So I'm going to stop now and set the camera up in the next location. Okay, the lighting is not perfect in this area, but that's fine. So I just bought this box like a month or so ago at Joanne Fabrics. And it's got this beautiful crow pattern on the inside of it. Just a little Halloween storage box. So actually I kind of want to go up a little bit more. Yeah, that's better. So you can see what's in the box rather than just the box itself. And I've got my little Sailor Moon kitty here. <laughs> just, to, just to say hi. Um, so this, I decided this year I am going to keep decks that either are sentimental or I don't want to let go of them prematurely because I tend to compulsively cull in my life 
it's a thing that I do. You know what, I want to do a little bit more ambiance just for funsies. I don't know if you're going to be able to even tell that this is on. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> this little um, cheap plastic, like, battery-operated candle thing. Okay. So this is where I store decks that I don't want to get rid of prematurely or decks that I don't use that often or decks that are out of season, things like that. So on top here we have Dark Goddess Oracle. This one is, it's the same person that made the Witches Familiar, same group of people that made the Witches Familiars Oracle that I showed you a minute ago. This is not like objectively, this is an objectively bad deck in my opinion. However, I, I think I like it, but I can't decide. And I've only had it a few months, so it's in here for now so that I won't compulsively cull it because it's one that, I, that I've been drawn to for years and I finally broke down and bought it this year. And it has, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I feel kind of weird about it. The art is so bad. But I kind of like that it's bad, but do I? I don't know. I can't decide. So it's in here so that I, so that I give it time because once I, sometimes a deck really has to settle into my life for a while before I know if it's going to work for me. Other times I know immediately, but with that one, I don't know yet. This was a gift this year, Tarot Avatara. It is Frida Kahlo, um, a Frida Kahlo deck. And I had an intense experience with it for a couple of months when I first got it. I suspect that this is going to be a deck that I don't take out very often. And I'm going to be taking it out during... I think this, if I'm understanding how this deck is going to work for me correctly. I think I'm going to be getting it out during traumatic periods of my life, emotional periods of my life, um, or for clients when they're going through something like really, like a big self-transformation. Um, so I decided that because I know I'm not going to be using it super often, it would make more sense in this box because my problem, I don't know if you guys have this problem, but whenever I'm looking at decks all the time, I feel guilty if I'm not using them often. So that's why a lot of things are in this box because I'm not looking at them all the time. So I might be like, hmm, I kind of want something different right now. Ooh, let's look at the box. Cause I, out of sight, out of mind, I have object permanence issues. <laughs> so um, this is sort of like anything in this box is here so that it protects me from calling it, which I know I keep repeating that, but anyway. This next thing on the bottom, this is a, this is the box that my pink onk deck came in, the person that sent it to me. Oh man, I looked online too, because I wanted these note cards, but they were no longer being sold. But I love the box. The box is so cool. So right now I have Thoth in it, and I hate this deck. <laughs> hate is maybe a strong word, but I can't let go of it. It has signor <laughs> historical significance, and I am deciding to keep it, but I've decided to put it inside a box to sort of protect its energy from me. Whatever, I know. Okay. <laughs> And then we have two little rows here. This is, I can't decide if I want to get rid of this one or not, Neon Moon. It's really hard to see it. Like, I love the color scheme in the deck, but it's hard. Actually, it looks great right now. There's enough lighting in here. I can actually see what's happening. It's kind of my Matrix deck, and I got a pretty good deal on it because I asked for a discount, and the seller was... Um, the artist was very kind and gave me like a 30% off discount to get the deck. And I was really appreciative and I like it. I really like it art wise, but it's just not one. I maybe pulled it out like once or twice all year. 
Um, this is Ludie Luskett, another beautiful bag by Wendy. She has sent me a few bags just as thank yous for, for different decks I've sent her over the years, and it's just oh, it's so kind. Anyway, Ludie Luskett, as I've said many times before, this is sort of a shadow work deck for me, so I do not get it out often, but I don't want to let it go. The last of my Wendy bags. This is Nightmare Before Christmas. How perfect is this bag for Nightmare Before Christmas Tarot? This I seriously like, and I say it every year. I use it like twice a year and I'm okay with that. I got rid of the box and the guidebook years ago. It's not taken up any space in my life really. So the times that I use it, I'm super delighted by it, but I use it like twice a year. This is Cosmic Tribe, which I think is super, I just think it's special. I think this is a special tarot deck, and, but it doesn't call to me very often, but it's, I don't know, there's something that just is really heartwarming about this tarot. Um, it's a bunch of naked people from the 90s, and it reminds me of subcultures that I've been a part of. It's it's nostalgic. It also is very body positive. Um, and it was a labor of love. You can tell the guidebook is really cool. So I don't want to accidentally get rid of it, even though I barely ever use it. Ooh. Okay, I don't want these things to fall. Last one here, Fairy Enchantments Oracle. I use this a handful of times a year and I use it primarily for spell work and I really like it for what I use it for. And this is, I mean, if it's still available, it's available directly from like Ian Daniels' website. He's the guy that made Tarot of Vampires. And I think it's a really interesting system, very well thought out, just like his tarot deck was very well, is very well thought out. And it was very affordable too. It was like 35 bucks for independently produced, very high quality, like it's got this gorgeous, anyway, I'm not trying to sell it to you guys, but <laughs> I'm really happy with this particular purchase, but it doesn't get used super often, so I keep it in here. I'm going to put these all back before I get to the back row, because I'm afraid these are going to topple over. Okay, back row. These are Loteria cards. I bought them earlier this year to use the um, the, the larger cards, the, the actual bingo sheets. I used those for, for like collages and stuff, but I kept the set of cards just in case I maybe want to use them as an oracle deck or something. But I haven't use them, but I don't want to get rid of them prematurely, so they're just in here. These are my Goddess's Knowledge cards that I've had since like 2019. I never use them except sometimes if a goddess that I'm currently working with, if there is a depiction in this deck, I will set it out on my altar or something. This is one that, I don't know, I really have never used it very, very much at all. But probably just because it's so small, <laughs> I don't get rid of it. So, there you go. Um, is this a Marigold Tarot bag? I don't, I just put something in this bag, so I actually don't know what's in here, so I have to open it. Oh, this is my, um, okay, yeah, I see why I did this. This is my um, original Egyptian tarot from, that I have had since I was a teenager. So it's in this Marigold tarot bag. Okay, <laughs> this little chonker is a beautiful crochet bag that has like a little fold out, like reading cloth kind of um, flap on it that one of my friends made for me. These are all of my prototypes for my Oracle decks. <laughs> all of the ones I still have anyway. Um, 
so this is like my mad my magic and medicine of plants prototype in here um, my um, mixtress oracle prototype is in here some other stuff like that I think this is a little chunky sentimental because I just I don't know I don't want to throw that shit away but there's not really that much of a reason to have it but you know anyway all right I am going to make you sit here while I put all of this back together. So this is my sentimental box category. <laughs> and sometimes things go from there to the giveaway box, but usually I just let them rest here and get them out when I'm ready for them. Okay, time for location number three. Say hi, Niblet. Say hi. He's just sitting in my in my tarot chair. So let's see. Hold please while I Okay. Never mind the spell that's happening right there in the background. For the person I'm doing the spell for, you will recognize it. So hi. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm just gonna kind of point to the things that you can see from here. Behind this um Brian Froud's fairies card right here is um, my mini version of the Kali Oracle inside that little box. Um, I, I like to keep that at reach. Inside this bag with the eyeball on it is, uh, I keep forgetting what this one's called, Modern Nirvana Oracle. I threw away the box and the guidebook because it was shit but I like the cards, so it's in there. And it's kind of a basic oracle deck, so I like to keep a couple of basic oracle decks at reach in my little tarot space. This falsa blanket looking bag right here is um, an RWS deck. It is the Centennial 1909 Los Carabeo. It's got the lilies and roses on the back it's it's my favorite version, my favorite modern version of the of Pixie's art, and I use it a lot. Um, let me scroll up a little bit. This bag here that you can see hanging up in the top left, that I just put a new. Oh, that is Vintage Wisdom Oracle. That's what that is. I'm always putting new decks in that particular bag. And here you can just see some other things on my wall that you don't normally get to see. I have some artwork from Abigail Larson. I have a picture, which actually is kind of personal, so I'm sort of glad that the glare is preventing you from seeing it. <laughs> um, I have a couple of pop figures here. You can see my Terra goddess and the two bast statues that flank her right there kind of see it I guess. It probably looks better to you than it does to me on a tiny little view screen but and this uh JBG artwork here is I mean you can't tell because it's so fucking professional but Julie colored that for me and sent it to me. This here this mixtape pattern is um it is actually the last issue of my zine <laughs> Chickweed issue 10 July 2014 that's the last time I made um an issue of my zine. Okay, now let me do some panning here over here. Sorry for the glare at the window. This is just like sort of my messy desk space. Um, maybe I should scroll past where the glare is. Yeah, that's okay. So I just have like, you know, this is my desk space or part of my desk space here, but you can see there are a few 
I'm trying to point so you can see it. A few decks right there. That's my Mixtress Oracle. That's my Magic and Medicine of Plants. Back in the back, the mushroom patterned bag. That is my Brian Froud Fairies Oracle. That one needs to be, it needs to be close by. <laughs> that's the first Oracle deck I ever got in my life. And I love it a lot. Um, and then that lace bag that's behind the Mixtress Oracle is just the extra cards from my Mixtress Oracle that I haven't filled in yet with new songs. Okay, um, I'm trying to think what else is not pictured. The only thing I can think of is my Tarot of the Cat people. So I will show you the fourth, the fourth, fourth and final location that I store my tarot decks. I'm kind of sweaty, guys, because I'm showing you sort of intimate spaces in my life. But this is, um, this is right next to my recliner. So this is where I sit at night, next to this lamp, next to this beautiful Isis statue that my friend Dolores gave me this year. Um, only like, it was only like a month ago, maybe even less, that she gave it to me. And so I now have my Tarot of the Cat People in that bag hanging right next to her. So this is my tarot deck that like, when I'm sitting in my recliner at night, like writing in my journal, pulling tarot cards, whatever, that's the deck that I reach for um, to read with. Uh, so yeah, it's a special one. It's a really special one. And I, yeah, that's gonna be permanent in my collection most likely. I doubt I will ever let that one go. And if I ever try to, please intervene. <laughs> because I don't want to ever give that one away. So that's it. Um, let me just sort of like rack my brain in case there's anything else I'm not showing you. Oh, in my like travel bag in my car, I have Urban Crow Oracle and the plaid back RWS, as I mentioned before. Um, downstairs in the board game closet, I have Pulp Girls Tarot so that I can easily take it to my porch to do readings. And I usually use that one for my, like, I pull all my daily cards on Sundays for the upcoming week. So that's usually, I will, do that on my porch if the weather permits. That's my favorite place to do my daily card pulls. Um, oh, I have the 10 version of Halloween Tarot in my purse at all times, all year round. I have, I think there's something else I'm forgetting. Oh, I still have Modern Witch in my bathroom as my like tub deck. However, lately I've been thinking either I don't need a tub deck or I'd like it to be something else, but I don't know because that one is very, like you can tell it's been used in or around a bathtub. <laughs> you can tell it is water damaged. I trimmed it. It's that terrible cardstock that we all hate. <laughs> Does anyone love Modern Witch cardstock? Let me know if in the comments below. <laughs> if you do love it. Oh my god, it's awful. It's the worst ever, in my opinion. But it holds up to water. I will say that. So for now, I do still have that one. However, I'm not attached to the artwork anymore. I could easily let it go. But until we get back into tub season again, which it's still pretty hot here, so I don't really start taking baths until the temperatures are like 60 or below. So it's still going to be another couple of weeks at least before I get to start taking baths again. <laughs> um, so I'll have to see how I feel about it using it in that context, since that's the only context with which I use it at this point. So it may not be permanent. And anyway, I don't know, maybe it seems a little early to do a collection video for 2023 when it's only September 21st as I record this. However, it felt like the right time. Um, 
I have one other deck that I will be receiving this year. Um, which is actually a reacquisition. I will be getting Serpent Fire Tarot thanks to... Um, I can't remember your channel name. Painted Owl. Painted Owl is the channel name. Deb so kindly offered and she bought it for me. It was like a pre-order, back-order thing and it's taking so long. But <laughs> I'm, you know, so grateful to have it again because that is one that I regret letting go of. So that's the only one that I will be adding to this collection, likely, until the end of 2023. And as far as, like, ones that I delete, I'm always deleting some. I guess I could show you my giveaway box. Should I do that? I mean, it's right here. I'm not going to show you the actual box. I'll just I'll just get it out and I'll show you some of what's in it. Some of what's on its way out. Actually, I don't want to show most of this. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I yeah, never mind. I don't actually want to show this. Because one of them it already has its future home. One of them, two of them, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to let go of. One of them, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to show you. Sorry. <laughs> False alarm. Anyway, thank you guys for watching another collection video. Thank you.